Surgeons today face the difficulty of working with both the human body as well as the surgical technology that has developed rapidly in the last 30 years. An important aspect of training surgeons in this technology is understanding the mental activity and stress involved. Humans have an amazing ability to multitask and to keep different things going at the same time. Surgery is unique because the stakes are so high. It was becoming clear in the surgical literature that doing these minimally invasive surgeries were really difficult, not just physically, but also in terms of the mental fatigue that resulted from doing them. We saw a real need for some way to be able to evaluate how useful all these different innovative ideas were going to be. Not just whether they worked or not technically, but whether they were really helping the surgeon do his or her job better. In order to get a handle on these cognitive things, mental workload, we actually have human subjects who do surgical tasks for us. And in the lab, we measure their performance on those tasks and develop metrics that are valid, that are sensitive, and can report to us exactly the kinds of things we need to discover to be able to make progress in this area. So some of the different types of uh, procedures we're studying involve just plain old pencil and paper measurement techniques. And we've also been trying to come up with things that are more active. For example, trying to utilize a secondary task procedure. The idea is that you're performing one task, and on top of that, you have the individual perform a second task. The harder you have to work at the primary task with a task of interest, the worse you're going to perform on the secondary tasks. And we wanted something really simple because these secondary tasks can get very frustrating and intrusive and we wanted something that was pretty easy and that was time estimation because there's this intuitive idea that, you know, time flies when you're really concentrating. You can turn that into a more sophisticated way of measuring mental workload um, by taking very precise measures of how long the intervals are between when a person says an interval has ended and a new one has begun. Stitch researchers use these studies in measuring workload to focus their efforts on developing a toolkit that can be used to evaluate surgical technologies. We've started trying to evaluate some of our own technology utilizing this toolkit, and we found it to be pretty interesting in some cases. For example, with one particular kind of display that's called the dual display. The dual view display, the second display, is really uh, is information that is gathered preoperatively. It's a holistic view of the area that the surgeon is focusing on, as opposed to the scope view, which is just the, the view that the, that the camera can see. We know that it can improve some aspects of performance. But the interesting thing is that it, of course, only helps if they use the display. For fewer targets, people tended to use the secondary view, but when you started adding more targets, they kind of, they stopped looking at the second view and only focused in on the scope view, which may mean that as workload increases, they're not able to continue to look at both views. In a lot of cases, when people doing these tasks feel that they're under a great deal of stress, that the task has become more difficult, that they're having trouble, they stop using the tools. It's sort of like, you know, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't always have them look at the display that you want them to look at. In the future, one thing that we need to look at is ways to bridge the gap between the scope view and the global view so that people are not shedding it to reduce costs, essentially, to reduce workload. The goal of the Cognitive Metrics research is to find ways to start thinking about how surgeons are utilizing technology. The Stitch Toolkit now gives other researchers the opportunity to use mobile device and web-based tools for future research in this area. Certainly we hope that um, the various university labs, military labs, and uh, industry labs that, develop, that are developing these technologies, that they'll start using some of these as well. That cognitive load also tells us when someone's truly comfortable and truly internalized or transferred a skill. And we don't just want to do this with surgeons. We want to be able to take these measurements and this data set and use it to others that have to use, rarely use procedures in wartime who may not be surgeons.